Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. It's another day above ground, which is always good. <laughs> Happy hump day. Okay, I'm going to make you, I think, do you know what the difference is between making you a host or a co-host? Um, I think if you make me a host, you're no longer the host. And if you make me a co-host, we're both co-hosting. All right, let's do it that way then. I'm going to make you a co-host, but I'm probably not going to be here. Good morning. You know, most of it. So, okay. um, but you're a co-host now, so you should be able to do what you need to do. And I know I don't need to give you much instruction. So thank you. I'm going to put my little instructions that I always put into the chat though. So that those are in there. Do you, do you have any questions? Nope, not right now. I don't, I think we're good. All right. Thank you. Let me grab hey Dennis, my... what part of Santa Cruz are you in? I'm on the west side of Santa Cruz. Oh. In circles. Going into right. a government run program type of I live in the Fox Valley. Oh, nice. I, see, I see Santa Cruz is very well represented. It is. Okay. <laughs> I'm actually in Santa Cruz this today as well. I'm working from home today. Mm -hmm. Ah, so. you're able to do that every once in a while, huh? I have a I had some an appoint a personal appointment smack dab in the middle of the day and so I, that's what I had to do today. Happens to the best of us. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, since we're doing everything like this, I can technically pull it off from home. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, let's see. Okay, so I put my little instructions in there, Jordan, and I think people, I noticed just from questions even yesterday that people are still a little bit confused about how they find the materials. So if you don't mind showing that one more time, sure. even though it, where I'm putting it in there every day, that's fine. Um, and thank you so much for teaching and I'm, I'm going to mute myself and hide myself and holler at me loud if you need me. Okay. okay will do. Thanks Laura. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. I'm gonna go ahead and give people about two more minutes to jump on here, and then we're gonna jump on into this and get started with day two of uh, Ignite. Is it day three? Day three, yes, thank you. <laughs> We made those number threes. <laughs> I guess it's better than me being called number one, right? For now. Everyone's losing track of the days. They Honestly. Blend together. This day, that day. 
All right. Good morning, everyone. Let's go ahead and jump on in. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jordan Thorpe. I am out of the Santa Cruz Market Center. I've been with KW for about a year and a half or so. I joined in December of 2018, so going strong. Um, I came from a small boutique firm and or brokerage and I've been involved in real estate ooh, since I was about 12 years old my family has experienced all different sorts of um, they've been involved with all sorts of different aspects of real estate so residential development commercial development business opportunities investments all sorts of things so I uh, I have a little bit of experience but licensed since 2014 and loving every second of what I do. And to get started, we are going to, I'm gonna show you how to access the course materials. Today, we're gonna to be going over Ignite, Spark 3, Powerful Language Gets Results. Keller Williams is very big on scripts. We have wonderful scripts written and they're rewritten and looked over frequently to make sure they're keeping current with the times. So Renee, if I could ask you to keep an eye on the chat for me, that would be great. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. I don't know if you said something because you're muted, Renee, but can everyone see my screen? Yes. Wonderful. Okay, so here we are in KW Connect. You can get there by typing in kwconnect.com. It'll bring you to the home page. If you go up here to the search emblem and you type in Ignite Labs, because this is Ignite Labs 2.0 or Ignite 2.0 Labs. It'll give you Ignite Train the Trainer, Ignite, you wanna click where it says see all course results and click on Ignite 2.0 Lab. Here's some information. The materials for all of the different sessions are in here. You have your student files and if you're going to be teaching, you have your instructor files. You have the e-learning, you can click on whichever day it is and there's the materials there. Here's the student file, and here are the instructor files. If anyone has any questions or needs to rewatch this, this is being recorded, so we can go back and check it out. That being said, I'm gonna stop this screen share and share the PowerPoint, and we will go ahead and get started. Can everyone see the PowerPoint? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Yes or no? Make up your mind. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this is the Ignite yes. Skills to Spark a Great Career session number three. Spark session number three, Powerful Language Gets Results. We are going to be focused on scripts today. So what successful agents do every single day? There's two things that they do. They grow their business and they run their business. So growing your business, again, it consists of lead generation for buyers and sellers, make seller listing presentations and get listings, earn listings if you're taking bold, make buyer presentations and earn listings, buyer listings, preview real estate, and then they run their business. So they market the seller listings that they have, they show their buyers homes, so they show their buyers, buyer clients houses, 
They negotiate contracts on behalf of their clients, transaction management to closing, vendor management, they set goals, they go through compliance and risk management, making sure everything is all good and the DRE is not knocking at anyone's door. They attend trainings and get coaching and they manage their money. That last one is a really big one. Uh, Gary Keller started analyzing the P&L of the top teams and top agents to make sure that they are profitable businesses, running profitable businesses, before they get on stage at Mega Camp or at Family Reunion to speak. So that one is a big one. If you're having trouble managing your money, let's talk. Let's talk. Let's get you the right resources and let's really, uh, let's get it going for you. Any questions so far? Okay, wonderful. So success leaves clues. So we know exactly what we should do every single day. If you're over here in the grow business category and every single day you're getting a lead, lead after lead after lead, you're going to wanna to keep going back there. Those are clues that it's leading. If you, once you reach so many leads, you're gonna have this crazy huge business that you're gonna to have to run but you're still always going to be growing business. This category over here is incredibly important and we will circle back to that in a few minutes. So does everyone understand why we should be lead generating for buyers and sellers? That's the fuel for your business. That's the fuel for your business. You can say you're in real estate, but you don't have any needs to work, clients to work with you're sitting in an office or you're sitting doing nothing or lead generating. Yeah. Make seller listing presentations and get listings. This is where the people, your sellers and your buyers are giving you the opportunity to sell yourself. People want to work with people they like and that they can relate with. We are in a relationship business. If you can connect with them, you're golden. That's not always true, but it's more true than not. Marketing seller listings. If you ever have a listing and you don't market it, you think your seller is going to be happy? No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, not at all. So these are all very key components to running a successful business and growing a successful business. What we're going to focus on today is growing the business, steps one through four, and running the business, steps two through four. Why? So when I have always talked to other agents, what I've picked up on is they never let however much they have in their pipeline or currently going stop them from growing their business. They always want more and more and more and more. Because if you have a 30 day timeline and X, Y, and Z are going to close. Then you have a 60 day timeline and then you have these people that'll go into escrow. Then you have a 90, then you have a 120, so on and so forth. And then you're booked out. So if you fill it enough, you're always going to have a consistent flow in it. But we never put running the business in the way of growing the business. Questions there? Okay. So growing your business and running your business, we have to know what to say to people. If we get in front of a buyer or a seller client and we're just, hmm, yeah, uh, well, hmm, it doesn't show your confidence in yourself and that you're the expert and it doesn't show them confidence. They wanna be able to know, okay, I've got this great rock star realtor, real estate agent, who's going to represent me, gonna get me the best deal that they can and really look out for me. If I sold a piece of property, if I was interviewing an agent and someone came in and they said, yeah, well the market, yeah, you know, I don't know, it's just kinda of doing something really weird right now. Instead of having something crisp and something that flows, I'd be hesitant on hiring them. So I always look at it, let me put myself in someone else's shoe. If I was the client, what would I want? What would I expect? Here is our timeline for today. Purpose of scripts, benefits of using scripts, role model, memorizing scripts, role play, script practice, recap, ahas, and daily success habits. So 
Laura has put the schedule in the chat room. We have Ignite, we have Lead Generation, we have Scripts Role Playing, and then we have Follow Up. Please refer to that. And we are going to jump in with the purpose of scripts. If anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat or try and get my attention and I'll get to you ASAP because I can't always see everyone when I have the screen up. Okay, the big picture. So scripts help you lead generate, uncover buyer or seller motivations, identify the objections, close deals. We're in the business of closing where you don't want these long, huge escrows that don't ever close. Speak in terms that the customer understands and build confidence. So, uncover motivations, that's a really big one. And everything we do, it, everything that we say is some sort of script. Hi, how are you? That's a script we've been conditioned for since we were young because that's the polite thing to say to people. I'm good, what can I help you with if you're in the customer service industry? That's a script. Buyer says, oh, I wanna sell. And our ears go, bing. Well, why do you wanna sell? That's going to get deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. Remember, things should always go three levels deep or more. Mm -hmm. Identify their objections. What's a really common objection we hear in real estate? Price. What about price? Too, too expensive. Too expensive if you're a buyer, okay. Yeah. What's some other ones? What if the price goes down? What if the price goes down on what? What if the prices go down and I buy at the high point of the market? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So real estate is a cyclical thing. It's always going to come full circle. And when you look at historically, the value of real estate has consistently gone upwards it's never gone downwards over a long period of time it's the one thing that holds its value over and over and over price it's too high actually this is under what the market is currently selling at mm -hmm. the situation of the house sometimes it's not everything as the buyer wants it to be the buyer doesn't say it doesn't have the yard it wants or the amenities that it has there. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So a house is never going to have exactly and everything that you want unless you build it yourself. Now I can show you land and we can start building if that's something you're interested in. And that would be your rebuttal. That would be my script I use, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay because homes that are already built, it's never going to be exactly what they want. It's going to check all of the big boxes and there's gonna be some smaller boxes that they can live without and they can add on later. In my experience, it might be different for everyone. Real estate is, you know, it's specific to you and your business. Building confidence, this is a really big one because the second you're using your scripts and you have what you're going to say, and a buyer finally doesn't have any objections or a seller doesn't have any objections and says, okay, I'll sign the contract. Okay, let's write it up. You're going to walk out of that appointment so happy, so thrilled. It's, it's something you have to experience to really understand. I remember mm -hmm. when I had my first deal, I, was, I could barely contain myself. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. Yeah, for that time. <laughs> Speaking in terms the customer understands. This is a really big one too, because we have some really confusing things in real estate. A lot of clients don't understand what escrow fully is. They don't understand what earnest money deposit means. They don't understand contingencies. So using scripts to help explain to the customer in a word, way that they understand, that's going to help them build confidence in you and your abilities too. Mm -hmm. They don't want me to go. There we go. Okay, understanding scripts, the purpose. Did you find everything you were looking for? Go ahead, look around and please let me know if I can help you. I see you admiring the big screen TV. Are you looking to get one for the big game this weekend? Again, these are all different scripts. Whether you're in the 
fashion industry, whether you're in uh, electronic sales, whether you're in real estate, whether you're in the financial sector, you're always going to have some sort of script. So has anyone ever been in, oh, here's a really good one, Bath and Body Works. Has anyone ever gone in there? Yeah. What do those customer service representatives do? The first thing you walk in, first second you walk in, what do they do? No long time since I've been They welcome They come up to you. Go ahead. They welcome you and they give you samples. They handle a sample. They run, uh, they practically sprint up to you and they say, Hi, how can I help you? What are you looking for today? Is there anything I can help you find? Here's a sample of our new tropical fragrance, whatever it is that they're selling mm -hmm. that day, whatever that season. Mm -hmm. That is a right. script. They have been conditioned to use those to help turn you into a client who's purchasing. Does anyone have any other examples of what sort of scripts we hear in customer service industry? Mm -hmm. Well, when I'm in restaurants, the waitress will come up while I'm eating. So how's the food tasting? How's everything? <laughs> what about the specials when they're yeah. taking your order or they right. just seat you and they say, do you have any questions about what our specials are? Right. They're conditioned to sell it because specials are usually more expensive. So the bill is bigger. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to get a larger tip. They're conditioned to say that mm -hmm. or upselling bartenders huge. There's a huge opportunity for bartenders to upsell. Did you want well, or would you like a better quality martini with, if you like a gin martini with, I'm not a gin drinker, so I don't know a good gin, right. or a vodka martini with Grey Goose. There's that upsell. They learned that after time and time and time again. Again, this is all practice. But here's the good thing about scripts. It's a tool in your tool belt that you can always improve on because it's something that you can do when you're with someone, when you're alone, learning to memorize it, whenever. If you have friends that really want to help you support your business, go through trial and error with them. Colleagues, coworkers, people in your office, people from another office, give them a call, practice with them. It's going to help you improve. Removing your limiting beliefs. So who can tell me what a limiting belief is? It's something that you believe will hold you back. So like, it's like a mental restraint, like something that you're, you're battling with mentally that you feel will hold you back, but isn't the reality. Yeah, absolutely. So what are some common limiting beliefs that people may have? You worry to get too personal, too, too deep into the conversation that you will make them uh, you know, retract instead of um, forward with you. So it'll get too personal and they won't want to work with you because it got too personal. Yeah, if we are too pushy, let's say, if we're trying okay. too hard, sometimes trying too hard is uh, backfires in a way. You need okay. to leave that comfort zone between you and the, cost and the client. Yeah, absolutely. So I might come across too pushy. That's a limiting belief. Here's the thing. In real estate, we are the professionals. There's a fine line, absolutely, between pushy and being a driver for it. And I'm a high D. I, I'm the bus driver. Get in, and if we have to go over this cliff, we're going. Let's go. So... There is a fine line between being pushy and being a driver for them. It is absolutely real estate on their terms, and we have to explain the market. Here's where the market is right now. If we're taking too long with a decision, we risk losing the six offers we have on the table that are over for the one offer that will come in under. That's a script that I would use for someone who's like, mm, well, I don't know. I don't want to be rushed. Absolutely. And I don't want to rush you. My job is to present you with the facts and what the market is currently doing. What's another example of limiting beliefs? Um, 
I guess someone, I don't know. Oh, I won't get a lot of clients because uh, I have a lot of lots of tattoos or something, or people will be turned off from that or something, you know, that could limit me and my confidence or I don't know, just an example. <laughs> Your appearance. Right. Okay. So when you walk into a listing appointment do you, or a buyer's appointment, do you have, are you slumped over? Are you just kind of mopey? Do you stand tall? You know, Dennis, you and I are, we're tall men. <laughs> There's no way around it. I walk into a room and people are like, oh my gosh, he's tall. Right. So, he, so, you know, do you walk in and are you, hmm, or do you walk in, your shoulders are back, you're standing tall and you exude mm -hmm. that confidence because you're comfortable yeah. in who you are. Mm -hmm. that's a different sort of script but it it's is. still a, mm -hmm. it's the physical script that's going to right. work for you mm -hmm. so for me one of my big limiting beliefs is that um well so one of them was i should say that i don't deserve to have uh, a very successful career because I haven't earned it. And the way I got over that is I looked at my day every single day. I looked at my calendar every single day and I looked and I said, okay, I did that. I crushed that. And I learned to gamify my lead generation very early on. I needed to get to 20 no's as fast as I could before I could go have another cup of coffee. Okay. I needed to get five yeses before I could buy that pair of shoes at Nordstrom. I needed to get to six people slamming the door on their, me or six people calling me scum and don't call me again and hanging up on me before I could go have lunch that day. Whatever it is, simple things like that. But I looked at my calendar and I said, there's no reason why I shouldn't have a successful career. I'm doing all of the activities. That's it. So I think a good activity for you to do, not right now, and I won't make you share what your personal limiting beliefs are, but I think a good activity for everyone to do is to write down their limiting beliefs, some of their limiting beliefs, and find someone who you can share them with and let them be a sounding board for you, someone you feel comfortable with going to. Because when you say it out loud, you're going to hear in reality how untrue it really is. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve to make six figures a year. Well, why not? We all live in very expensive areas. Mm -hmm. And the reality is that six figures is, it is a lot of money, but that's kind of a median income. A San Jose, that's a very common income. Mm -hmm. Santa Cruz too. Yeah. So there is on page four in the participant guide, <clears throat> there is a section where you can write down the limiting beliefs and then I would recommend doing that on your own. Find a partner you feel comfortable with, share it with them, and then don't let the limiting belief affect you. It's, it's something that sounds so simple, but it's so effective. Renee, are you there? Yes, I am. Uh, can you share one of your experiences with limiting beliefs for us? One of my biggest limiting beliefs is the same as yours in that I don't deserve to make a lot of money. And, um, you know, I've, I've, um, the one thing about limiting beliefs is that, you know, it's like Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So if I didn't feel like I was going to, I deserved a lot of money, guess what? I didn't get a lot of money. So, um, mm -hmm. but that's one of my biggest limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think like you're, your what, go ahead. No, was, uh, what I got from what Renee said, it's almost like your mentality creates your reality. You know, whatever mm -hmm. you say, it's, it's yes, you know. Um, so if you say you're not going to get it, that's what's going to happen. If you say you are going to get it, that's what's going to happen. That's right. Hey, Renee, is your big why affected by any limiting beliefs? Well, yeah, in that, um, and my big why right now is getting out of debt. And I have uh, spent so long in relationship with debt. And to be honest with you, even the way I say it is, is a negative affirmation. You know, it's not mm -hmm. getting out of debt. It's, 
um, being debt free, you yeah, know, living a free life, living a debt free life. Yeah. So you have to be cautious about how you speak to yourself because the way, mm -hmm. as, as Dennis was saying, if you speak what you think and what you speak, you manifest. Right. And so you That's have to so be true. really careful. So the script we tell ourselves is even important. Mm. Wow. Powerful. Probably more important than any other script. Absolutely. Because what we tell ourselves projects out onto the outside world. And if people see negativity from our inside outward, no one's going to want to work with that. If they see this glowing positivity and this great can-do attitude and I'm going to get you the best deal and I'm going to go to bat for you every step of the way, that's the person that I want to work with. Or if they see commission breath. Oh, yeah. That's it. So, Dennis, what was the one thing I used to say in school? Um, it's you don't go after the commission. You service the client. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. Client first, commission last. Yes. yes. And if you build me, a... Go ahead. Go ahead. If you build a business based on commissions people are going to see that and you're not going to have the repeat business. If you build a business on relationships and clients, you're going to have repeat business refer more than you can handle. Yeah. And that is, should be the goal for everyone. Yeah. I was in bold last year. Yeah. And our co I had a call with the coach and he said, your job is to put the gas pedal down so hard that you get so busy stuff starts falling apart and your market center steps in and says, how can we help you? Wow. That stuck with me. Mm -hmm. Renee, you're on mute. Mm, that was this year. Russ told me that last year. No, but our, we were in bold in January. I didn't do the Palo Alto bold. Oh, okay. This was with Russ in June and July last year. Okay, I'm sorry. No worries. All right, so limiting beliefs. Here's a great exercise with it too. Write your limiting beliefs, crumple them up, light them on fire, rip it up, get rid of it. Manifest it into physical and then get rid of it. Mm. Hey, Jordan. I'll do that with my wife today. Yes, Nairi. Uh, and happy birthday, Nairi. Happy birthday. Um, thanks, thanks. Happy birthday. <laughs> thanks, thanks, thanks. Um, I have two that I've been struggling with. Mm -hmm. Um, just as well, since forever. Um, and it was completely evident when I went to a listing appointment with my teammate like earlier or late last week, mm -hmm. where we were sitting there and the guy the client was asking her and having this great conversation with her. And I literally was sitting there feeling like I would have never had any of these answers for this guy. Like I would have literally just been like, I don't even know what the freak you're talking about. Like just completely lost. And I like, mm. wouldn't have, I would have totally bombed that listing appointment had it been myself by myself. And then the second one is, second guessing myself mm -hmm. those have been like the two that i've been like really struggling with so it's i can't do it by myself mm -hmm. and it's that it's the noise in your head that i'm I, I don't i don't deserve this i can't do it things like that i'm not good enough for this well, no, uh, yes and no. It's, it's also like, let's say if I'm um, answering a client or if I'm about to write up a purchase agreement or something, like I find myself second guessing what I'm putting or what I'm saying. So I'm trying to seek confirmation elsewhere prior to, and then it ends up being that I was on the right path mm -hmm. and that I just didn't trust myself. Yeah, we have to have trust in ourselves. And experience is a, is a wonderful teacher. My mm -hmm. question for you, Nairi, would be, are you in a, how many years in, have you been with in real estate? Well, so that's a tricky question. Um, I would say at least two full-time. 
two full time. Okay. Yeah, let's just say that. Are you enrolled in any sort of productivity or coaching? Uh, productivity and coaching, no. Does your office have? You're with. You're in the Campbell Hello, office, Mary. right? Campbell doesn't have a productivity coach. Okay, so they I will. They yes, will. We're going to speak yeah. it into existence, huh, Renee? They will. Oh, um, and Renee. also, Nairi, I want to just offer two things to you. Number one, you know, practicing the scripts and that are, are going to help you mm -hmm. overcome the 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 hesitancy or the the feeling that you don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. And secondly, um, I think that you want perfection. You don't want, you want progress, not perfection. I think that one of the things that people want to do is they want to make sure everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, if there, it would, it's, I hate to say this, but it's, it's really difficult to do screw things up so badly. So you've got to have confidence in yourself and, mm -hmm. and believe that, you know, you know more than the client does. Right. Mm -hmm. You know more than the client does. So right there, you're at an advantage. So it's just a matter of, of, of um, uh, you know, the, exactly. practicing the scripts and then, and then you know, just um, having, you know, understand that you know more than they do. So just go for it. Mm -hmm. And also, I would like to say that, Nairi, like, I look at it as, like, I've been doing art my entire life, and I know that frontwards and backwards. So, like, I try to... In, and this is what I think when I hear you say it about the confidence is like with something you have a lot of experience with, you'll have that confidence but with something brand new. It's always going to be worse at first, but it, you know, it'll get greater later, as, you know, because um, it is something new. You feel like, Oh, I don't know everything. or I, I want to know everything, but like how um, Renee said, as long as you exude that confidence and you do know more than the client and I, because that's what i'm uh, i'm fear i'm fearful of also like will i know everything how will i do because i'm new and i just have to get that fear out of your mind and just you know take yourself to a confident space mentally progress not perfection right yeah right. i've been li i've been licensed for 35 well a lot of years <laughs> <laughs> 29 forever Renee 29 forever exactly and and you know to be honest with you I don't know I don't know everything you know you never know everything um you know I would say that I probably have you know like I was talking to Rob last night and I said you know the one thing about it is that I have 30 years of ex 30 years of mistakes instead of one year of mistake mm -hmm. so you know if nothing else I have that to offer in that you know and and the same thing with the clients you know, because I've had 35, 30 years of mistakes, I can actually say this is a potential pitfall or mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> but that just comes with time, you yeah. know. Every day in real estate is a learning experience. Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Nairi. So, benefits of using scripts. Before we head into that, why do you think it benefits us as real estate agents and real estate professionals to use scripts? Oh, there we go. Anyone? Is that a question? Oh, because it gives yeah. us a foundation to kind of bounce off of. So we're not stumbling when we're talking to a client? Uh, mm, uh, well, so <laughs> like, um, filler words. So I was in a dialogue class one time and the instructor who was, they were a great instructor. They were, um, very old school in teaching. So they had a buzzer and anytime someone talked and used some sort of fil filler word, they would ring that buzz every time. It reminded me of the game Taboo, where you're not supposed to say the words. And I was like, that was a great conditioning exercise to get filler words out of our dialogue and what we speak like and how we speak. So benefits of using scripts. They build confidence and job ability. They allow you to stay focused on the conversation and in the present moment, because if you're like me, it's like squirrel, squirrel, squirrel. Scripts allow for consistency in what is said and actions that agents take. 
If I say I'm going to do X, Y, and Z, now I have a platform to do X, Y, and Z. And if I don't do it, I'm the only one that has to answer to the client, no one else, because mm -hmm. I said it. I'd like to take number two just a step further in that it allows you to stay focused on the conversation and in the present moment. If you're so busy trying to think of a response, are you listening to what the client is really saying? You know, what's so the biggest this, component of an active conversation? Listening. listening. And it's hard. <laughs> it's so hard. Here's the really neat thing though. If you're listening and you're not speaking, if you, who he, they who speak first loses. Yeah. Here's a really quick script. Will you reduce your commission? Here's your script. No. <laughs> that was awesome. I just have to say. No. <laughs> that answer no. is no, people. <laughs> and if they want to argue it, here's my follow-up script. I'll consider reducing my commission, absolutely. What services would you not like me to provide? Right. Do you want iPhone pictures and not professional photography? Do you want me to not create the marketing materials? What would you not like me to do to justify the commission reduction? Right. That's good, Jordan. So they allow you to stay focused. And if someone is throwing things at you to get you off track, and sometimes clients will, very rarely it's done intentionally. Sometimes it's they're a very fast talker. Right. But it allows you to say, I will get to that. I will get to that and let's finish what we're talking about. So it'll keep you in the moment, grounded, listening to them. So you don't have to think of a response on the fly. You're listening to them. You're actually hearing them. Questions on the benefits of scripts. I just want to reiterate one of the things that you said, um, Jordan, in that when you, when you, when someone asks if you'll reduce your commission and you say no, then you have to shut up and you have to live in the silence. And that's the hardest thing because sometimes, you know, if the silence goes on for a while, you want to make it all right mm -hmm. and you can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Get comfortable in silence. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's going to be huge. I'm the self-proclaimed king of the stare down and eye contact. I know a lot of people find it very <laughs> awkward, but I will just sit in silence and. Do you win at staring contests or does it do other people? I usually win. <laughs> um. Do you ever, when like, let's say going back to the commission question, um, do you ever throw it back at them and like put it in perspective of like, let's say like, would you take a, a pay cut for the equal work or more work? Like, do you ever do that? No. Oh, okay. yeah. I, just I don't do that, that because this isn't a question about their salary. It's a question. It's an objection. They already want to work with me. If someone's objecting to me, I know they want to work with me. And for me, I turn it into a competition with myself. If they're going to give an objection, no is not meaning no. No means find a loophole. No means find a way around to a yes. I, I know it sounds crazy, but you know, I, it, it, yeah. <laughs> so the, I always put it back on, I justify and bolster my credibility and what I do as a professional for them. Photography, professional grade photography, marketing, Marketing is not cheap. We're prospecting based marketing enhanced. So we need to be putting ads on Facebook, zip flyers, custom, <clears throat> excuse me, custom websites, face, uh, I said Facebook ads, Google ads, email blasts, Instagram, blast, Instagram paid ads, things like that. That stuff adds up. And yes, mm -hmm. we are being paid a lot of money at the end of the sale. And guess what? Before that, it's coming out of our own pocket. And if we're a newer agent, chances are we don't have this big surplus of savings or a business account to be using that from. So we need to bolster our credibility and our professionalism and show them what we're really doing. And if you put, the, put it on them, what services would you like discounted? Nine times out of 10, they're gonna go, 
what do you mean? Oh, well, I didn't know you paid for all of that. I didn't know you did all of that. Oh, that makes sense. Realtors have a very bad rap right now in general. People see million dollar listing and think we drive on drive in nice fancy cars and yeah. go to lunches and have these expensive lunches. No, it's not like that. People think we're overpaid. People think we're scum of the year salespeople. It's a part of the territory. Our job as Keller Williams agent is to rise above it and give the best experience that we can for the clients. Any other questions on the benefits of scripts? No. Has anyone had any big wins in using scripts? No one? Crickets. Crickets. Okay, is it because we're not using scripts or what is it? Yeah, I'll be full transparent. I'll take one for the team. Yes. So why aren't we using a script, Nairi? And thank you for taking one for the team. Um, it's just been one of those walls that like I just struggle to get over. To Is it the role playing? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just so awkward for me. It's just yeah. so uncomfortable. I just, it's, it's one of my biggest hurdles. I get the, the purpose and the, and the benefit of it and I see how it works and I get the whole thing. It's just um, my own, like my own issue. <laughs> so you have an obstacle or uh, an aversion to scripts, whatever you want to call it. And you question yourself with it. So what is it going to look like in a year and a half if you're still not using scripts and you're still in the same situation of your self doubt and the noise and you're unsure of your unsurety and your abilities. I'm not sure if unsurety is a word. So we're it's just going to look like garbage. So if scripts is going to get you to a place of abundance and wealth and a thriving career, why aren't we using them? Because I'm ridiculous. <laughs> okay, that's a good answer. <laughs> I'm no, no one is ridiculous. Remember, our scripts we tell ourselves matter. Oh. So, Nairi, I'm going to be calling you after this. And if I'm just, I'm just, it's my own thing. Like, that's just, it, I'm putting it out there myself, right? I'm doing this to myself. So, yeah. I just need to knock it out. That's right. Nairi, I know what you mean. It's kind of awkward practicing with other agents, but honestly, the best practice you'll get is practice by cold calling. Good point. Yeah. You'll get a lot of experience that way. <clears throat> Jordan, if I could make a suggestion, this is Lee. Yeah, sure, go ahead. For all those people that have difficulty with scripts, my suggestion is you create your own. In other words, if you're unfamiliar or find it difficult to, to work through somebody else's word text, develop your own, understand the principles behind it, and make it your own. Because if you're trying to say something that wasn't your wording, right. it comes up not necessarily authentic. But when you say it to somebody, uh, wh why are you moving? Why is it important to buy this house? Why is it important for this school district? Ask all those questions. That will help build part of your script base. But you have to have a general framework, and that framework has to be personalized. It has to be you. It's not something you memorize. A lot of people think if they memorize the scripts, they're going to be okay. But that's not true. That doesn't come across authentic. you got to take a look and, and have a conversation with yourself to the point where you can have a larger conversation with somebody else where you cover the five or six basic points in every conversation. So my suggestion is simply take the scripts for those of you that have difficulty with a word by word uh, script where you might get confused because you forgot the next word over the point of it is to write down the points of the script and then use your own words, use your own familiar understandings. Like you could have a relative that bought a house without a realtor that didn't go well. You could have somebody else that, did, that used a lender that they didn't know because they didn't have a proper referral. When you tell those kinds of stories, it fills out for your client, the realtor that you are and the service that you can bring. But for those of you, like I said, that have difficulty with scripts, 
sit down with someone if necessary and write your own. So when you say this thing, it comes out as comfortable as your own Hearst history. Mm -hmm. Find what works for you. Use a yeah. baseline, by all means, use a baseline yeah. and then make it your own. All right, how to use scripts. So this is a video, I'm going to attempt to play it. I don't know how long this is, so bear with me. Oh, we're not going to be using it. Can everyone hear it? Yes. Yep. I'm Jeff Glover, and I'm going to tell you the top five things that you need to know about using scripts. Step one, you're going to need to get your scripts from a top agent in the office, your team leader, a maps coach, or of course, Keller Williams University. Step two, we're going to need to do a total transformation of instead of talking and telling, of asking questions. Selling isn't telling, selling is asking a series of questions that leads to desired response. So instead of talking so much, we need to get in the habit of asking questions. And asking questions gives us control of the conversation. Control of the conversation gives us our ultimate outcome, which is an appointment set or closing. Step three, we need to listen with good intentions. And what I mean by that is we need to listen to their answers instead of just listening to them talk and asking another question that comes to mind. For example, Instead of asking a seller where they're moving to and then going on to the next question, how soon would you like to be there? Ask them, where are you moving to? And when they give you a response, ask them, what takes you there? Step four in becoming better at scripts is we need to learn to mimic, mirror, and match the prospect. What I mean by that is we have to listen to their tone of voice. We have to speed up or slow down based on how fast the prospect is talking. That means when they respond and say, we're moving to Toledo, oh, Toledo, that's exciting. What takes you there? 93% of communication is body language and tonality. And that means only 7% are the words that we say or the questions that we ask. Step five, we need to take these five points and practice them daily. If you think of NFL teams, they practice 50, 60 hours on the practice field for a one hour game. Our game is our presentations mm -hmm. and our appointments. And we need to practice daily everything that we've learned every single day before we meet with our clients. When it comes to scripts, my biggest aha is that everybody has their own scripts. We're pre-programmed to have scripts and we're talking and asking questions that are scripted. However, what we found is that most of our own scripts are no good. And so we have to learn the right scripts, the right questions to maintain control of the conversation. Thanks for watching KW Connect. Make it a great day. All right, so. It's five steps were in there. This is something that can be downloaded from KW Connect, as well as this is being recorded so we can go back and watch it. Tonality is a big thing. Mirror matching is a very big thing. If you have a client who's really excited and really going, match that. If you have a client who's very quiet, very soft-spoken, and just very relaxed, don't go in there and be blah, 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 and pushy, because you're going to lose them there's going to be a big disconnect unless they're your family. Even still, they might not. Okay. Understanding scripts. So we are, we're not going to be going into role modeling and role playing just for the sake of time. When you have someone who you're practicing your scripts with, it's important that you memorize your script and you're not reading off of it right in front of them. If you memorize your script and you have memorized what to say, you're going to have the confidence in your ability. The consumer is going to feel that too. Same with your role play partner. If you know what you're saying, your role play partner is going to try and emulate that, to try and mimic that. So this is a suggested way of memorizing the scripts, reading the first sentence of the script out loud five times, repeating the same sentence five times while smiling, reading the second line of the script out loud 10 times while smiling, saying the script from memory, recite the first two sentences 10 times with a smile, then say the script by adding one sentence at a time, repeating it 10 times, then say the entire script as fast as you can five times in a row. That's a strategy that could work for some. If you have your own memorization technique, use that. There is no perfect way to memorize a script. The end goal is to memorize the script, cross the finish line.
progress, not perfection. Any questions on understanding scripts, memorizing scripts, learning scripts? No. Okay. I'd like to, I, I'd like to add something and, and I understand what Lee was saying and I think that he's right to a certain extent in that a lot of the, the scripts are going to feel uncomfortable in that. The thing to remember though is that these scripts were written by um, people within MAPS and, and within Keller Williams who have, are using like neuro-linguistic programming, things like that. So these scripts weren't just thrown together. They were actually very well thought out. And um, what this is saying is at least use this as a baseline. Mm -hmm. and, and like Lee said, understand what they're trying to accomplish. But it's one of those things where you need to, to, to learn first and then you can adapt. Right. That's my two cents. Learn the model, add your creativity. Yeah. There's a book about that, isn't there? I don't know. All right. Role play, script practice. We're not gonna get into script practice here just because we don't have the time. If you do not have a script partner or a script call or a role play call, I highly encourage you to find someone to practice with. That is a part of the activities in Ignite. That's one of the daily things that we should be working on. Even without Ignite, we should be working on it before we call clients because, or leads, because once we have that script in mind and we've been practicing it, the more and more we're calling and using that, it's going to flow better. Instead of, hey, it's Jordan, um, just calling to follow up. Uh, no, there's no client that wants to hear that. If I was a client, I wouldn't want to hear that. Always ask yourself, is this something that I would want? So, Nairi, do you have a script partner that you could start working with? Uh, I'm sure I could find one. Okay. Reach out to someone. Reach out to an agent. And they're going to be more than happy to help you. If you're not comfortable talking to someone in your own office, call someone from the other offices. We have three offices to choose from. Santa Cruz, Silicon Valley, or Campbell, or Gateway. Pick up the phone and call someone. Family members, talk to them about it. Friends, talk to them about it. Cold calling. Kind of a risk. However, no risk, no reward. True. All right, here is the role play model that they want that should be used. Pick a script, pick a partner, practice. Stand up and follow the six steps of reading the script. Then switch the partner and repeat step three. Part two, with the same partner, partner A is going to say the entire script conversationally, and partner B is going to hold partner A accountable and provide feedback. Switch the partner roles and repeat step one and repeat this as many times as possible in the time allowed. If you have a 15 minute time block to do this, do it. If you have an hour time block to do this, use that hour. This is a building block. This is a foundational piece. If we don't have this, we can't grow a stable business. And I want to remind people that I've actually put in there that I do script practice 8.30 every morning. 8.30 every morning. Well, Renee, I might have to join you one of these mornings. And yeah, and I'm offering it to everybody um, for the, while we're doing Ignite, it's open to everybody. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I offer the people that I coach, but right now everybody can go into it. So you get a sense of what it's like mm -hmm. um, to do script practice and so the, the link is on the, the chat box. You're more than welcome. Thank you, Renee. But it looks like two people just, good, 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 good. As long as you're doing it. As long as you're doing it, that's right. So arrange a script practice partner, spend 15 minutes each day rec reciting the scripts. You can do it FaceTime, you can do it virtually, you can do it Zoom, you can pick up the phone, get it done.
Record yourself saying the scripts on your phone and play them back while speaking along with the recording. I'll be honest, I wouldn't do that just cause, just cause I don't, I don't want to hear myself being recorded. I don't want to hear myself what I said. The client will tell me what I said. My script partner needs to tell me what I said. Hold me accountable. What are the additional, what are some additional ideas you have for building the daily habit of a script practice? Maybe there's like a tracker we could use, some sort of 66 day challenge, something like that. Putting it on our time block schedule. Recap and ahas. So how has everyone's thinking of scripts and script practice and what scripts are changed from once we started this to where we are now? Well, it sounds like everybody learned that one script. No. <laughs> you know, being a newer agent, I think it's important to read through the scripts. Um, I'm still reading through scripts, much less, you know, using them as I was talking to somebody. But uh, there's a lot of answers in there that have helped me on buyers' presentations to actually have a real-time answer. And without reading through there, I would have never known. Mm -hmm. So um i think it's educational <laughs> i'm not good at scripts but you know if you have answers and then you can say oh I'll, let me verify that i'll get back to you i mean quick responses where it just buys you some time and then you follow through so i'm learning that way based off of you know being in a zoom world and not real techie and trying to figure things out and um i don't know that part has helped me tremendously so i want to offer something, something. There's something. Go ahead. Go ahead. There's nothing wrong. I want to touch on something very important that she said. Okay. It's she said that Chrissy had said that it buys you time to get the correct answer. I would rather say, I don't know. I can't say with a hundred percent certainty at this moment. Please let me get a correct answer for you, and I'll follow up with you later today. I'd rather no. say that than give a false answer. Or say, I think I know the answer, but before I say it, I want to make sure of it, so I'll get back to you. Exactly. Renee, what were you going to say before that? Just that. Just that, okay. <laughs> we must Just be on the same frequency. And there's nothing wrong with saying you don't know. Or, you know, I, I think I know, but before I say anything, I want to make sure and get back. I'll get back to you. There's nothing wrong with saying that. They, they yeah, appreciate that. that answer. Uh huh. So, so our daily success habits: add ten contacts to your database, have ten conversations about real estate a day, ten handwritten notes, and ten home previews per week. Because we are on lockdown, does not mean we cannot preview homes for clients. In fact, it might even be better for you to preview the home alone than going with the client and going and filling out what they might like and what they might not like. If you have them on a search and they say, oh, I really like this one, and you know they're looking for a big, expansive backyard and it doesn't have one, but they say they like it, go and check it out because if, if it's checking nine out of the 10 boxes that they want, it could be a possibility for them. Those are our daily success habits. Make sure you're lead generating every single day. Gamify it if you need to. Set a goal for your lead generation. Build your bunker. Stay safe. Don't do anything crazy. We have, so here's a follow-up one. Why it's more important to learn internalized scripts for lead generation, uncovering the motivations of buyers and sellers, identifying any objections, closing deals, speaking in terms the customer understands, and building confidence. Scripts will help you tremendously. We have a ton of different scripts throughout Keller Williams. You can find them on Connect. You search scripts. We have lead generation series, work with buyers, working with sellers, win with buyers, win with sellers, ignite scripts, all sorts of different scripts. If you need to find them, talk to a office or leadership and they can help you find them.
All right, folks, head into your role play and script practice. Does anyone have any questions for me? No. Listen to the compliance do not call list and everyone stay safe. Have a great day. Go get some leads, nurture those leads and turn them into clients, everyone. Thanks everyone. Stay safe. Right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Amanda, come show me to me. Show it to me, please. Show it to me, please. Yeah, welcome, please.